Okay, what I have here is a really old school air compressor. And if I had to guess, I'd say this is probably like 80s or 90s. Uh, they don't make them like this anymore. It's a V-twin belt driven air compressor. It's not a really big air compressor. You see, they actually sold it as a paint sprayer. Nowadays, it would be an oilless uh, direct drive. It's what they would probably sell for a paint sprayer these days. It's not a huge amount of airflow. It's three SCFM at 90 pounds. Not a ton, but uh, you know, it, it's built just. I mean, look at it. It's built a lot better than what a comparable compressor would be these days. Um, I'll just go ahead and just turn it on very briefly for you. It's pretty quiet too. But I'm going to have to turn it off. So I got this from one of my mom's friends. She had this and a lawnmower just sitting in her garage and they were just taking up space so I told her I'd sell them for her. Well, I sold the lawnmower, but I couldn't sell this one. And the reason why I couldn't sell it is because simply I wasn't comfortable doing so. Um, I turned it on and let it build up a bit of pressure, and I ended up turning it off because I had to do something. And it's a good thing I really did because I didn't realize it at this time, but this uh, has major problems. Okay, so I flipped it over on its side, and you notice that there is a bit of rust build up on the outside. Now rust build up on the outside of an air compressor is always a bad sign because when you're dealing with air compressor tanks they tend to rust out from the inside first because compressing air will build up condensation and all that condensation ends up in the tank. Now they always have a fitting on the bottom which is supposed to have a uh, drain valve in it so that you can drain all the moisture out so it doesn't completely rot. When I got this one, there was a pipe plug in here. When I turned it on, and I let it build up a little bit of pressure, and I turned it off because I had to go do something. When I turned it off, I could hear something leaking, uh, and I thought it was just an air fitting. So I went looking for the leak, and I found it wasn't leaking from any of the fittings. It was leaking from right here around here somewhere. It's actually leaking from a pinhole in the tank. And that's very, very dangerous. Because what that means is that the entire integrity of this tank has been compromised. And when you're dealing with a pressure vessel, usually you don't end up with pinhole leaks. Usually what happens is they fail structurally in one area and then like sort of unwrap very quickly. It's a lot like a balloon popping, except instead of popping, it explodes. And I'm not exaggerating that. If you go on the internet and look it up, people have been severely injured or killed by compressors exploding. And, you know, it, it is just a pinhole. And a lot of people might say, oh, that's not a big deal. That's not going to cause problems. But when you're dealing with rust on a compressor tank, it, it's like an iceberg. You only see a pinhole, but by the time you see a pinhole, this entire area has already been compromised. And you know, it's just, you're supposed to drain your tank regularly, but a lot of people just simply don't. And then, you know, they get old and this happens. And if I had let this get up to full pressure, it could have very well exploded. And you know, I've known of people who had that happen to them, and they're lucky to be alive. And you might say, oh, well, we could just weld that up. Uh, no, that's very, very bad idea. These uh, consumer tanks, they simply just aren't thick enough to safely weld on them. I mean, on the bigger ones, you can re-weld them and then get them recertified, but it's just not worth it on these smaller tanks. Since this tank has already been compromised structurally and is no longer safe to use as a pressure vessel, I'll just say we go ahead and take a look at the inside.
Oh, got it open. And this is what's inside of it. Yeah. That is all just rust scale. Top of the tank. Doesn't look too bad except for. Oh, that doesn't look too good. It's just a rust stain. You see that this tank doesn't even look like it was coated with anything. You see all the rust and then at the bottom, this is where all the moisture has been accumulating. Get my light out of the way. Yeah. And then the bottom part, see this is where all the water was sitting. And that's where it was supposed to drain out of. So it looks alright from the outside, but from the inside this has all been severely weakened. And if I clean this rust scale off, you'll see how the metal is all pitted. Well, I took a wire wheel to it and made a huge mess in the process. I got it clean up so you can see just exactly what kind of damage has been done. And all this, this is all just pitted. And this pitting means that it's going to be weaker in these areas. And when you have a pressure vessel, that's a big problem. This little slot right here is just from where I cut the uh, wheel support off. But this right here, see that hole? That's where the pinhole was before. It's gotten so thin right here that where, when I hit it with the wire wheel, it just started opening up. So this is what happens when you don't drain your air compressor. And you know, whether it forms a pinhole leak, it's no big deal, or it explodes and possibly kills somebody, it's, there's really no way to know. So the takeaway from this is drain your air compressor. And drain it regularly. I try to drain my compressor on a regular basis because I don't want this to happen. Because if you don't, you could be sitting on a ticking time bomb. Now, as for the rest of the compressor, the compressor is still good. That regulator still works. So the tank is garbage. Uh, I might use it for liquids or something, just weld it back up, but more likely it'll just go to scrap. But I'll keep the compressor part, I'm going to cut it off, and maybe I'll try to find another tank or just plumb it into my existing air system because it'd be nice to have something quiet even if it's not, uh, doesn't have a ton of flow because the one I have now is oilless, so you can't really run it at night because it makes a ton of racket. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. I made a really big mess.